Hello guys, on the forum at the minute there's a good discussion going about motor torque and how much torque our motors need to pull our model and to pull a decent load. I only have one model working at the minute, this John Deere 8360 RT. So I'm going to try and do a couple of real world tests to see how much power this model with the two N20 motors has. And maybe from those tests we'll be able to get a rough idea of, of what kind of power we need to have a decent model. So when we're looking at motors on sites like eBay, the figure we really want to know is the stall torque for a given voltage. So you're usually looking for a stall torque at around about 3 volts because your battery is usually 3.7 volts and you're going to lose a little bit through the motor driver. So you're probably getting around about 3 volts on the motors roughly. So if you look at that figure for stall torque, that's going to be the torque at which the motor can't push anymore. So when you have absolutely maxed out the motor. So a motor like this N20 gear motor has these metal gears and that hopefully would mean that you'd be able to reach the stall torque without damaging the gear train. So some of the plastic uh, motors, you might get to the stall torque but then the gear train might disintegrate. But what you really want is that the motor will get to a point that it just can't push anymore and that doesn't damage your gear train. So what you really want is to be able to reach the stall torque without damaging the gearbox or even better to exceed the frictional coefficient between the wheels and whatever surface you're on so that the wheels can spin. That way you definitely won't damage your gearbox if the wheels are just spinning. So ideally you want enough power that you exceed the frictional coefficient between the wheels and whatever surface. It can be hard to exceed the frictional coefficient between the your know, wheels and whatever road surface because you could have a road surface like say a, a sandpaper road on your diorama. It'd be very hard to lose traction on a on sandpaper with a rubber wheel. It's gonna have great grip. So if you try to pull something ridiculously heavy on that, you're really running the risk of damaging your gearbox then. But if you have, say, a field and you're trying to plough something and the ground is just uh, ground up coffee beans or something like that, then that should be fine. You, you should just spin the wheels if you're trying to pull too much of a load. Or say you're a, you've built a quarry diorama and you have a hill that's gravel. You go to climb the gravel and the wheels spin on the gravel. It's fine. You're probably not going to damage your gearbox. So make sure you consider what kind of surface you're going to be working on when you're choosing your gear train. So for my John Deere 9560R model, that's a big model and it has double wheels so that's probably going to be ploughing in a flat field with ground up coffee beans. So my choice of the Tamiya motor with the, with the plastic gearbox is probably going to be okay because it's not going to fit on a road and you wouldn't be driving a huge tractor like that on a road you'd probably only be using it on a huge big field and a big farm so that should be fine but if you're going to be using your model to be pulling loads of gravel up a hill in a quarry, a quarry diorama or something like that you might want to consider getting a motor with a gearbox uh, with a metal gearbox I mean so that you probably minimize the likelihood of you breaking the gearbox so we're going to do a few little tests here. I'm going to try and do some hill climbs uh, with an empty trailer and a fully loaded trailer later. But we should work out what weight the model is. So I'm just going to use this little uh, luggage weighing thing again. And uh, we'll see how heavy the model is. This thing's only accurate to 50 grams, but I think it'll be alright for this. So we've got 550 grams for the weight of the model and I want to know the weight of the trailer that I'm going to be pulling as well I have two trailers here this one is bigger and it's heavier so I think I'll use this in the hill climb test but we'll test the weight of both just to see so we'll try the half pipe trailer first you can see there that's 350 grams and the ground trailer that weighs 650 grams that was a bit the same as the tractor I think the eBay seller I bought this motor from said it was a 5 volt motor 
that you would get 30 rpms at 5 volts and you'd get 29.5 newton centimeters of torque so I have two of them so roughly 60 newton centimeters of torque is what I should have from this from this uh, tractor but that value is going to be for the stall torque and I'm pretty sure that is far beyond the frictional coefficient of the tracks here I'm pretty sure if we put too much of a load on this we're just going to spin the tracks and we're never really going to get to that you'd have to weigh the tractor down a lot to, to really get that kind of grip I'd imagine so last week when I was testing the motors I just had them pulling on this little scales here not a very accurate measurement but I'll just do it with this model too just for a just for a little comparison so you can see there the scale was reading 500 grams here uh, I can't really remember what that was in relation to the, the other motors but I would imagine it was probably a little bit stronger only because we have the two motors and we also have tracks so we should have a bit more traction but you also notice there the model had no problem spinning the tracks so that's that's good from a saving the gear train point of view we're, we're unlikely to damage the gearbox if we can spin the tracks so I've come outside to do a little bit of a test now we have this uh, area here this flat piece then a bit of a hill and I'm gonna drive it with the tractor then drive it with the empty trailer tractor and the empty trailer and then drive it with the tractor and a full load in the trailer and we'll see if we can climb the hill so the tractor on its own tractor seemed to struggle a bit on the corner there don't know if it'll be able to pull the trailer around that but getting up the hill doesn't seem to be too much of a challenge to the tractor so we'll see how we get on as you can see there our grain trailer is getting hooked up on everything it just has no ground clearance it is absolutely useless so I need to, I need to upgrade that trailer Everywhere we go, we're just getting bogged down with this drive that's on the front of the trailer here. This DVD drive idea, that's just getting bogged down and everything, so that's no good. We need to get a better trailer. Okay, I've switched now to the cramp half pipe trailer. And no load, so let's see if we can get up around the corner. Oh, our lifting arms are catching on our trailer. We might not be able to turn sharply enough to get up the hill. No, it doesn't look like we're going to make it. We'd be struggling even just to get up the struggling to get grip is the problem really. Well, struggle to get round the corner, so let's see if we have any hope of climbing the hill with the trailer. We just don't seem to be able to get the traction. Oh, it's away now. It's not looking good for our uh, not looking good for a loaded tractor. We can't get up it with the empty trailer. I think our tracks just can't get traction in the loose gravel. So I think the problem is a lack of traction because the model is too light. So I've just put a rock in, uh, well just a bit of a plastic glove to protect the paint. Uh, we'll see now if we can pull that all up the hill. seem to have much better traction now you can 
here the motors are clearly working a lot harder than they previously were. Even with the added weight of that stone, we couldn't uh, we couldn't really get enough traction to get up the hill. Or maybe we were too much that time. We were starting to dig into the dig into the gravel. But uh, we'll see how far we get with a fully loaded trailer. All right. Well, I filled the I filled the trailer and dumped the load into the bucket here. So I'll just see what that weighs. A full load of gravel in this bucket. So. It's 800 grams worth of gravel in the trailer here. Okay, so here's the test with our fully loaded trailer. See how far we get with this. We're just always struggling to get grip. As soon as the trailer gets caught in anything, we just struggle to pull it over. And now our tractor's starting to slide. Disaster. And we're gonna cope the trailer. The wheels aren't even spinning on the trailer. So there you have it, we don't have enough power to pull a fully loaded half pipe trailer with our John Deere on a flat, let alone up a hill. But to be fair, some of these rocks are the size of the wheel. I mean, you couldn't pull a trailer over that with a real one, I would think, on loose gravel. So, you know, it's probably not terribly surprising that we couldn't pull it around. So that was a somewhat disappointing display by our, our John Deere, but... Uh, that's only the first model we've had to test. These tracks are very smooth. You don't exactly have anything in the line of uh, treads on it really. They're pretty much flat. So it's kind of hard to get that to grip into the soil. The Massey has great treads on its tyres. It should be really able to dig into the ground and should be really able to pull. So when I get that finished or the Fent, the Fent has slightly uh, smaller tyres, uh, less depth than the tread of the Fent tyres. but still should be able to put up a reasonable performance. I wouldn't say they're able to pull as much as this, but they should be able to get more traction, which would make a big difference on this kind of ground. So that was slightly disappointing, but we'll have to get the other models finished and do a similar test with them and see how they go. I'll just bring this model over with the fully loaded trailer onto the concrete and see if we can pull a bit more weight when we have better traction. I noticed the concrete post beside the gravel here, so I pushed it on exactly the same slope that we had before. And we see if we have any more traction here. Doesn't look like it. We seem to be struggling to get grip here just as much as we were previously. And we're drifting to one side on the concrete. just struggle to get traction with this tractor. See the, the weight is just not there. So the model is trying to pull more than twice its weight up the hill so maybe it's no surprise that it's struggling a little bit. But I have some sandpaper here so I'll run the sandpaper up the concrete and we'll see how that works. Okay so now we have the sandpaper we should have much more traction. So let's see if our tractor can pull it up this Absolutely no problem. Once we could get the traction, we have no problem pulling the full load up the hill. 
So there you go, if you're making your diorama and it has going to have some pretty steep hills in it, you're going to want to make sure and make your hills with sandpaper so that you can make it up. You could really hear the, the load when we had the rock on top of the tractor, whereas now when we're climbing the hill here, you can hear there's very little load on the motor. It's much, uh, it's much easier on it when we have the right traction. Even one motor there is nearly able to pull the whole load. You can see the front of the model lift too. So, sandpaper, that's the way to go if you're building your diorama.